from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello and welcome to theCUBE virtual, here with coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, I'm your host, Justin Warren, and today I'm joined by Jay Snyder, who is the Chief, uh, Chief Customer Officer at New Relic. Jay, welcome to theCUBE. It is fantastic to be back with theCUBE, one of my favorite things to do, has been for years, so appreciate you having me. Yes, a bit of a CUBE veteran, you've been on many <laughs> times, so it's, it's great to have you with us here again. Um, so you've got some news about uh, New Relic and, and Amazon or AWS, uh, a strategic collaboration agreement, I believe. So maybe tell us a bit more about what that actually is and, and what it means. Yeah, so we've been partners with AWS for years, but most recently in the last two weeks, we've just announced a five-year strategic partnership that really expands on the relationship that we already had. We had a number of integrations and competencies already in place. But this is a big deal to us and, and we believe a big deal to AWS as well. So really takes all the work we've done to what I'll call the next level. It's joint technology development uh, where we're initially going to be embedding New Relic One right into the AWS management console for ease of use and uh, really agility for anyone who's developing and implementing a cloud strategy. Uh, big news as well from an adoption relative to purchase power. So you can purchase straight through the AWS marketplace and leverage your existing AWS spend. And then we're going to really be able to tap into the uh, AWS premier partner ecosystem. So we get more skills, more scale as we look to drive consulting and skills development and any implementation for faster value realization and overall success in the cloud. So that's the high level. Um, happy to get into a more detailed level if you're interested around what I think it means to companies, but just setting the stage, we're really excited about it as a company. In fact, I just left a call with AWS to join this call as we start to build out the execution plan for what the next five years look like. Fantastic. So uh, for those who might be new to New Relic and, and aren't sort of particularly across the, the, the sort of field of observability, could you just give us a, a quick overview of what New Relic does and, and then maybe talk about what the strategic partnership means for, for the nature of New Relic's business? Yeah, so when I think about observability and what it means to us as opposed to the market at large, I would say our, our vision around observability is around one word and that word is simplification. So, you know, I talk to a lot of customers. That's what I do all the time. And every time I do, I would say that there's three themes that come up over and over. It's the need to deliver a customer experience with improved uptime and ever improving performance. Uh, it's the need to move more quickly to public cloud to embrace the scale and efficiency public cloud services have to offer. And then it's the need to improve the efficiency and speed of their own engineering teams so they can deliver innovation through software more quickly. And if you think about all those challenges and what observability is, it's the one common thread that cuts across all those, right? It's taking all of the operational data that your system emits and helps you measure and improve the customer experience. And your ability to move to public cloud and compare that experience before you start to after you get there, the effectiveness of your team before you deploy to after you get there. And it's all the processes around that, right? It helps you be almost able to be there before you're there there. I mean, if that makes sense, right? you are be able to troubleshoot before the event actually happens or occurs. So our vision for this is, um, like I talked about earlier, is all about simplification. And we've broken this down into th literally three piece parts, right? Three products, that's all we are. The first is about having as much data as you possibly can. I talked about emitting that transactional and telemetry data. So we've created a telemetry data platform, which rides on the world's most powerful database. And we believe that if we can take all of that data, all that infrastructure and application data and bring it into that database, including open source data and allow you to query it, analyze it and take action against it, um, that's incredibly powerful, but that's only part one. Further, we have a really strong point of view that anybody who has the ability to break production should have the ability to fix production. And for us, that's giving them full stack observability. So it's the ability to action against all of that data that sits in the data platform. And then finally, we believe that you need to have applied intelligence because there's so many things that are happening in these complex environments. You want to be able to cut through the noise and reduce it 
to find those insights and take action in a way that leverages machine learning. And that for us is AI ops. So really for us, observability, when I talked about simplification, we've simplified what is a pretty large market with a whole bunch of products just down to three simple things, a data platform, the ability to operationalize and action against that data, and then layer on top in the third layer of that cake, machine learning. So it can be smarter than you can be. So it sees problems before they occur. And that, and that's what, a, that's what I would say observability is to us. And it's the ability to do that horizontally and vertically across your entire infrastructure and your entire stack. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, there, there's a lot to dig into there. So let's let's start with some of that operational side of things because I've long been a been a big believer in in the idea of cloud as being a state of mind rather than a particular location. And a lot of people have been embracing cloud. We we know that for for about ten or so years, and the and the size of reinvent has has proven out what how how popular cloud can be. Uh, so some of those operational aspects that you were talking about there, about the, the ability to react, I particularly like that you uh, you were saying that anyone who can break production should be able to fix production. That's a very different way of working than what many organizations would be used to. So how is New Relic helping customers to understand what they need to change about how they operate their business as they adopt some of these, these methods? Well, it's a great question. There's a couple of things we do. So we have an observability maturity framework by which we deploy, deploy and, that, and I don't want to bore the audience here, but needless to say, it's been um, built over the last year, year and a half by using hundreds of customers as a test case to determine effectively that there is a process that most companies go through to get to benefits realization. And we break those benefit categories into two different areas. One around operational efficiency and agility. The other is around innovation and digital experience. So you were talking about operational efficiency. And in there, we have effectively three or four different ways and what I call boxes on how we would double click and triple click into a set of actions that would lead you to an operational outcome. So we have learned over time and applied a methodology and approach to measure that. So depending on what you're trying to do, whether it's mean time to recover or mean time to detect, or if you've got hundreds of developers and you're finding that they're ineffective or inefficient and you wanna figure out how to deploy those resources to different parts of the environment so you can get them to better use their time. It all depends on what your business outcome and business objective is. We have a way to measure that current state, your effectiveness, apply rigor to it, and then design a process by using New Relic One to fill in those gaps. And it can take on the burden of a lot of those people I hate to say it because I'm not looking to replace any individual. It's really about freeing up their time to allow them to go do something in a more effective and more efficient manner. So I, um, I don't know if that's answering the question perfectly, but you, I don't think it, there is a perfect answer to it's it. A, it's every a, customer is a bit different. It, so this is exactly why we developed the methodology because every customer is a little different. The rationale, there are those though, common, is common themes. Yeah, so the rationale, the there's a lot of common. I was going to say there's a lot of common themes. So what we've been able to develop over time with this framework is that we've built a catalog of use cases and experiences that we can apply against you. So depending on what your business objectives are and what you're trying to achieve, we're able to determine and really auger in there and assess you. What is your maturity level of being able to deliver against these? Are you even using the platform to the level of maturity that would allow you to gain this? benefit realization. And that's where we're adding a massive amount of value. And we see that every single day with our customers who are actually quite surprised by the power of the platform. I mean, if you think traditionally back not too far, two or even three years, people thought of New Relic as an APM company. And I think with the launch this summer, this past July with New Relic One, we've really pivoted to a platform company. So while a lot of companies love New Relic for APM, they're now starting to see the power of the platform and what we can do for them by operationally operationalizing those use cases around agility and effectiveness to drive cost and make people be more useful and purposeful with their time so they can create better software. Yeah, and I think that's something that people are realizing a lot more lately than they, they were previously. I think there was a lot of TCO analysis that was done on a, on a replacement of FTE basis, but I think many organizations have realized that, well, actually that doesn't mean that those people go away. They get retasked to do new things. So any of these efficiency, you start with efficiency and it turns out actually being about business agility, about doing new things. With the same sort, with the same people that you have, who now don't have to do some of these more manual and, and fairly boring tasks. 
Yeah, well, and just it, it, I was going to say, Justin, if this uh, if this cube interview thing doesn't work out for you, we're hiring some value engineers right now. It sounds like you've got the talk track down perfectly because <laughs> that's exactly what we're seeing in the marketplace. So I agree. So yeah, give us some examples, if you can, of uh, or maybe one or two of things that you've seen that customers have have used New Relic where they've they've stripped out some of that uh, that that make work or the things that they don't really need to be doing, and then they're turning that into new agility and have, have created something new, something more innovative. Have you got an example you could share with us? You know, it's, it, it, it's funny. Um, we were just, I just finished doing our global customer advisory boards, which is, you know, rough and tough about a hundred customers around the world. So we break it into the three theaters. And we just, we were just talking with a particular customer. I, I don't want to give their name, but the session was called I, we broke the sessions into two different buckets. And I think every customer buys products like New Relic for two reasons. One is to either help them save money or to help them make money. So we actually split the sessions into those two areas. And I think you're talking about, uh, you know, how do we help them? How do we help them save money? And this particular company that was in the media industry talked at great length about the fact that they are a massive news conglomerate. They have a whole bunch of individual business units. They were decentralized and non-standardized as it related to understanding how their software was getting created, um, how they were defining and, and um, determining mean time to recover, performance metrics. All these things were happening around them in a highly complex environment, just like we see with a lot of our customers, right? The complexity of the environments today are really driving the need for observability. So one of the things we did with them is we came in and we applied this same type of approach that we just discussed. We did a maturity assessment for them and we find a, found a variety of areas where they were very immature in using capabilities that existed within the platform. So we're able to light up a variety of things around insights. We're able to take more data in from a logging perspective. And again, I'm probably getting a little bit into the weeds for this particular session, but needless to say, we, we, we looked at the full gamut of metrics, events, logs, and traces, which was, wasn't really be, being done in an observability strategy manner and, and deplo deployed that across the entire enterprise. So created a standard platform for all the data in this particular uh, environment across 15, 14 different business units. And as a byproduct, they were able to do a variety of things. One, the uptime for a lot of their customer facing media app applications improved greatly. Uh, we actually started to pivot from actually driving costs to showing how they could quote unquote make money because the digital experience they were creating for a lot of their customers reduced um, the time to glass, if you will, for clicking the button and how quickly they could see the next page, the next page or whatever online app they were looking to get dramatically. So as a byproduct of this, they were able to repurpose to the point you made, Justin, dozens of resources off of what was traditionally maintenance mode and fighting fires in a reactive capability towards building new code and driving new innovation in the marketplace. And they gave a couple of examples of new applications that they were able to bring to market without actually having to hire any net new resources. So um, again, I don't want to give away the name of the company. It <laughs> maybe it was a little too high level, but it, it actually plays perfectly into exactly what, what you're describing. Um, that is a good example of, of one of those, that one of the, it's always nice to have a specific concrete customer doing one of these kinds of things that you, you describe in generic terms. Okay, no, this is, this is being applied very specifically to one customer. So we're seeing those sorts of things more and more. Yeah, and I was going to give you, you know, I, I thought about um, in advance of this session, you know, what, what is a really good example of what's happening in the world around us today? And I thought of a particular company that we had just recently worked with, which is Chegg. I don't know if you're familiar with Chegg, if you've heard of them, but they're an education technology company based in California. And they do digital and physical textbook rentals. They do online tutoring and online customer services. So Justin, if you're like me or the rest of the world and you have kids who are learning at home right now, think about the amount of pressure and strain that's now being put on this poor company Chegg to keep their platform operational 24 seven seven days a week so that students can learn at pace and keep up, right? And it's an unbelievable success story for us. And one that I love because it, it touches, you know, me personally, because I have three kids all doing online learning in a variety of different manners right now. And, you know, we talked about it earlier, the complexity of some of the environments today. This is a company that you would never guess, but they run 500 microservices and um, a highly complex uh, um, 
technical architecture, right? So we had to come in and help these folks and we were able to reduce their mean time to recover because they were having a lot of issues with their ability to provide a seamless performance experience because you can imagine the volume of folks hitting them these days uh, and reduce that mean time to recover by 5X. So it's just another example where we're able to say, you know, it's a real world example where you're able to actually reduce the time to recover to provide a better experience. And whether or not you want to say that's saving money or making money, what I know for sure is it's giving an incredible experience so that folks in the next generation of great minds aren't focused on learning instead of waiting to learn, right? So very cool. That is very cool. And yes, and I have gone through the uh, the whole teaching kids at home yeah, yeah. plan, which is, uh, which, which was, it was disruptive, not necessarily in a good way, uh, but we all, uh, we adapted and, and learned how to do it in a new way, which is, uh, you know, it, it was a lot easier towards the end than it was at the beginning. I'd say we're still getting there at the Snyder household, Justin. We're still getting there. Uh, was, uh, practice makes perfect. Yeah, thank so you. So for organizations like Chegg that, uh, or who might be looking at Chegg and thinking, hmm, that, that sounds like a bit of a success story. I want to learn more about how New Relic might be able to help me. Um, how should they start? Well, there's a lot of ways they can start. I mean, one of the most exciting things about our launch in July was that we have a f new free tier. So for anybody who's interested in understanding the power of observability, you can go right to our website and you can sign up for free and you can start to play with uh, New Relic One. I think once you start playing for it, we're gonna find the same thing that happens to most of the folks that do that. They're gonna play more and more and more and they're gonna start to really embrace the power. And there's an incredible uh, New Relic University that has fantastic training online. So as you start to dabble in that free tier, start to see what the power and the potential is. You'll probably sign up for some classes. Next thing you know, you're off and running. So that is one of the easiest ways to get exposed to it. So certainly check us out at our website and you can find out all about that free tier and what observability could potentially mean to you or your business. And uh, as part of the AWS reInvent experience, are they able to in engage with you in some way? They can definitely come by our booth, check us out virtually, see what we have to say. We'd love to talk to them and we'd, we'd be happy to talk to you about all the powerful things we're doing with AWS in the marketplace to help meet you wherever you are in your cloud journey, whether it's pre-migration, during migration, post-migration, or even optimization. We've got some incredible statistics on how we can help you maximize and leverage your investment in AWS. And we're really excited to be a strategic partner with them. And, um, you know, it's funny it's, uh, for me to see how observability, th this platform, can really touch every single facet of that cloud migration journey. And, you know, I was thinking originally as I got exposed to this, it would be really useful for identity uh, entity relationship management at the pre-migration phase, and then possibly at the post-migration phase as you try to baseline and measure results. But what I've come to learn through our own process of moving our own business to the AWS cloud that there's tremendous value everywhere along that journey. That's incredibly exciting. So not only are we a great partner, but I'm excited that we will be what I call a first and best customer of AWS ourselves, New Relic, as we make our own journey to the cloud. Well, fantastic. And uh, I'm sure I encourage any customers who might be interested in New Relic to, to definitely go on and check you out as part of the show. Uh, thank you, uh, Jay, Jay Snyder from New Relic. Uh, you've been watching the Cube Virtual and our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Make sure that you check out all the rest of the Cube coverage of AWS reInvent on your desktop, laptop, your phone, wherever you are. I've been your host, Justin Warren, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.